Hey guys, Fred and Sheila McCoy, <clears throat> Hatfield McCoy Museum, fredmccoy.com. We're going to do a video. I'm going to try to make it as short as we can. Sheila gets mad at me sometimes because I mention people's names. Understand, I'm, I'm not attacking that person individually or personally. I'm attacking the information that they've given out incorrectly. I'm attacking the way that they have insulted or assaulted somebody else. Um, I don't mean it personal. I know sometimes people take it like that and I can see how they do because I do get pretty rough. I'm going to try to change. Uh, I'm going to try to uh, be a better person in presenting these videos. I'm going to try to uh, uh, control myself a little bit better. Once again, what you've got to understand is some of these people's been spreading this stuff for 20 years and I've listened to it and I've held back. And then finally, when we got the avenue with the camera and the YouTube channel and retirement to, to kick back, I started kicking. And, and it's okay to kick. I'm still probably going to kick, but I'm going to have to kick in a more diplomatic manner. Uh, and I realize okay. that. And Sheila's worked with me on that. And uh, my brother, different people. So, um, you know, there's family that doesn't appreciate the way. They like the information the that we correct, yeah. but they don't like the way in which we're correcting it. Or I'm correcting it. it or that, I'm presenting it. We're both correcting it. Sheila knows as well as I do the information we're putting out is correct. It's just not the proper way to present it. Now, <clears throat> Sheila doesn't like for me to mention people's names, and I understand that. And I'm going to try to do that not at all, or at least only when I have to. Today I'm going to mention somebody's name, but I just about have to. And the reason that I do is, if I don't mention their name, I may be doing them an injustice. This was their video. They made a video, and they made claims, and they made statements, and they made a presentation that's incorrect. Now, we, we did this video. It turned out to be 50 minutes long, mm -hmm. and she was going to download it, and she watched it, and she, she didn't want to. So I've agreed to do the video over. I'm going to try to present the same evidence. It's the same. I'm going to try to watch my language, my demeanor, and my personal attacks. But I'm going to give you the evidence, and then you guys decide on who's correct here. Maybe this gentleman that's a professional presenter and a professional speaker, I wish I was like him. I wish I could speak like that, that I could make you believe anything I tell you. But that's not Fred McCoy. Fred goes head on. And he, he goes with the truth. I know I come off as a, a butthole, but I come off with the truth. And some of you out there would rather have that and have the truth than you would to have that handshake and that smile and a fib. I want to say lie, but I'm going to say fib. Okay. Good looking. job. <laughs> Guys, the story we're going to cover is uh, the headline. It's a YouTube video. Uh-huh. And I encourage you to go watch it. After you go watch it, you may, you, you either agree with me or not, but you'll get to see what I'm talking about firsthand. And the video was titled, Devil Ants Hatfield, Gun Presentation. Big Sandy, Big Sandy Heritage Museum, April the 12th, 2019. There's the headline. Mm -hmm. Now, <clears throat> it's hard to see here, but I, I can see it and I got notes. But this uh, presentation was given by Wilm Keith Hatfield. Now, Wilm Keith Hatfield says he's the great-grandson of Devil Lance Hatfield. So was Stephen Hatfield, Sheila and I's friend from Sarah Ann. Uh, Wilm Keith says that his grandfather was Tennis Hatfield. That was the grandfather of Stephen Hatfield, our friend. And Wilm Keith says his great-grandfather was Devil Lance Hatfield. And that was uh, Stephen's great-grandfather. Stephen's father was Handsome Jack Hatfield. Okay. So if what Wilm Keith says is true, his relation, then Wilm Keith's father and Stephen's father were actually brothers. Now, I don't want to harp on it, but I am going to throw this out there. I'm going to throw it out there every time I do a video 
where we're talking about somebody that represents Pike County tourism or, or anything like that. Anybody that represents either family through a tourism uh, organization, I think should be required to take a DNA test, a DNA. It's real simple. You spit in that tube or rub the th swab over your mouth. Costs about fifty or sixty dollars. I'll, I'll pay for it for the for the four that I'm always talking about. If it's a money problem, I'll pay for it. <clears throat> but it would be worth that just to confirm. Let's just confirm and make sure that they're who they say they are related to. Because see, there's a lot of people in life that's took DNA tests and they didn't turn out like they were supposed to. There's a Hatfield organization that says that Devil Ants Hatfield's why DNA didn't come back like it should have. Now, I don't know nothing about why. I don't know nothing about any of that, but they seem to know. And they need more descendants to test so they can confirm. Uh, we've done a video on this. It's not going to change his DNA. It's not going to change who Devil Lance was. But it may give us enlightenment on who he was related to. This story here is going to be covering two subjects. One is going to be covering the little derringer <clears throat> that William Keith says that he's making a pre presentation of. A little derringer. And while you're watching that video and you're watching William Keith standing here talking to you, look to the background of William Keith in, towards the end of the video. You'll see a large black billboard that mm -hmm. they've hung up there. And it starts off with William Anderson Hatfield. And it's telling Devil Lance's history. It's telling his birth. It's telling his civil war. It's telling, and that's there. You'll have to pause your TV on it so you can read it. Okay. That's the two things we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about the board, and we're going to talk about the little pistol. First of all, let's talk about this little pistol that William Keith is making a presentation of. He's making a presentation, and he's saying that this lady, and I, 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 I talked to this lady, Sheila and I have on the phone. I've talked to her before, uh, maybe a year ago or so, about another uh, story topic. another topic. topic thank you babe it's a real sweet lady mm -hmm. real nice lady this lady says that her father her grandfather was dr dana t moore and that he was a doctor there in island creek and that he was the hatfield doctor he took care of cat ants he took Levisi. care of all of them Levisi. she says that was her great grandfather that done that She's saying that she's got a gun there that Cap Hatfield <coughs> gave her that Devil Lance had given him and that he had given the grandfather. I'm to sorry, her grandfather, yeah. That Cap Hatfield had given to her grandfather. Now, her grandfather, I think, died in 1971. Her mm -hmm. father, I think, died in 2008. I have no problem with anything Miss Rivers says. This story's not about Miss Rivers. She seems like she's one of the nicest people you could ever want to talk to. Real sweet lady. Mm -hmm. My problem is this Wilm Keith Hatfield. Now, what Wilm Keith Hatfield does, there's an old saying that if you can't dazzle them with brilliance, baffle them with BS. And I think that's what... William Keith Hatfield does during this story, if you'll watch him. And how he does this is it's like magicians doing something with their left hand while their right one is doing something else. He's talking a bunch of stuff there. He gives a good speech, but the speech in the end is about nothing. Nothing. William Keith's holding this gun up and he's talking about this gun. He says, you know, these guns, there's four criteria to having a legitimate artifact there. They're going to put it in that museum, he says, for one year. But see, once you put something in a museum or somewhere and you, you authenticate it and you say it's what it is what it is, then that gives it some credibility because it's been in a museum. That motorcycle has been in a museum. 
we made that motorcycle. Sheila and I built that <clears throat> motorcycle to the McCoy theme, mm -hmm. but it's also been in a museum. That, that made that motorcycle, that added some value to that motorcycle because it's been in a Hatfield McCoy Museum. Same with this gun. Now, he says that there's four criteria to uh, <clears throat> documenting this gun as being Devil Lance's and uh, Cap Hatfield's. And he says that one of them is to have a photo of that person holding that gun. There's no photo. We, we done a video on this the other day. Go back three or four days, there's a video, and there is no picture, no photo. Hundreds and hundreds of photos of Devil Lance Hatfield and his family and family members. Not one family member, not one photo on the porch. Everybody, even little children, got big old 44s. Not a one of them holding a, a derringer. Not Devil Lance, not Cap, not none of their children, not even their wives. It rides right in with that other story we're talking about with the sawed-off shotgun, where a gentleman says that he has Devil Lance's sawed-off shotgun. What Franz Tierman would saw off a perfectly good shotgun, it, it's not going to happen. Let's stick with this story. So the, out of the four criteria, there, there is no photo, William Keith says. We, we don't have a photo. Well, okay. He says that the, the next one is to make sure that it's a real gun. It has to be a real gun. Can't be a fake gun. And he talks and he talks and he talks. He talks about the Italians, how the Italians tried to duplicate this gun. And they put, they had seven rifles, rifles in it, the little strips to, to aim with a barrel, the rifle. And the normal culture, he talks about the normal culture between the different guns. And he says that their gun had five rifles. He says that uh, it can't be fake. Listen, guys, if you if that bucket right there is as fake as it can be, but if you say that's Devil Lance Hatfield's, you just added value to it. If that's Randall McCoy's, you just added value to it. It can't be fake. I'll take a fake gun of Devil Lance's or Randall McCoy's. They didn't have none. Theirs was real. That's why people died. But he says the gun can't be fake, and he gives this big, long speech. Well, okay, the gun can't be fake. That's a real gun. That Derringer is real. <clears throat> not Devil Lance's, not Cap Hatfield's, but it, it's a real gun. It says that that gun was awarded to Devil Lance Hatfield as a Civil War memento. <laughs> I didn't even know they gave deserters rewards and mementos. I didn't know that. Devil Lance deserted in February of 1863, and they called them back in April of 65 when the Civil War had ended and said, hey, come here, Devil Lance, we got a, a pistol we want to give you for deserting and leaving all your men behind and them being taken prisoner of war or killed. Didn't happen, see? Didn't happen. Now, you all can believe that video, or you can believe me. <clears throat> a letter of authenticity from a Hatfield. Tell him where the gun come from. He says another thing you need out of the four criteria is a letter saying where the gun come from, from a Hatfield family member. Now, the only way that you could tell where this gun came from is to have an authenticated letter from Devil Lance, Cat, um, Tennis, um, somebody like that. You know, even the doctor, even the doctor, it would be good to have an authenticated, uh, certified letter from the doctor saying he got it from Cap. That would help, but it wouldn't prove that it came from Cap. It wouldn't prove that it came from Devil Ants. Don't prove it. Why don't we have a, a photo? You know, we've got many guns in here. Some of them we've got photos with the original owners. Some of them we don't. Some of them you just got to go with some of the history that was passed down. Some of them you think, hmm, not sure. So we don't say one way or the other, or, or we tell that it's not. 
Uh, so he says you got to have a letter of authentication. Who signed this letter? Surely not modern day Hatfields like Rio Hatfield or uh, Wim Keith Hatfield. Uh, surely it's some of the old generation that he's talking about. He says he's got a, a letter authenticating this gun as that of devil answers and cats. He also says that it's never been, none of this has ever been called into question. Well, I'm questioning it. I, I'm questioning it. We'll, we'll discuss that in a minute. But I'll just go ahead and put that out front right now so that way everybody knows that now it's legitimately been questioned by somebody. He says that Henry knew it and Jack knew it. Well, he's talking about handsome Jack. Handsome Jack Hatfield, the son of Tennis Hatfield, the father of Stephen Hatfield. We have talked to Stephen Hatfield hours on end, him and Debbie, and uh, never mentioned nothing about this. Never told us about everything in the world. Talked about everything in the world. Uh, Wilm Keith says that Henry, now Henry was married to Jean Hatfield, and Gene and Henry had the little Hatfield Museum there in uh, Sarah Ann for a while. A little mobile home sitting there. We've got a picture of it on fredmccoy.com. There's a, a picture of it after mom and my grandmother put a few items at Blackberry Supermarket and they called it the Hatfield McCoy Collection because of course Paul McCoy was Hatfield and McCoy. His mother was a Hatfield and his dad a McCoy. So they called it Hatfield McCoy Collection after that uh, Gene and Henry opened up a little trailer over at Sarah Ann. They called it Hatfield Museum. Henry and Jack knew about it. We want to see this letter of authenticity notarized and signed by Henry and Jack. That have been two good ones. Maybe he's got a letter signed by Henry and Jack Hatfield since they knew about it. A certified letter of authenticity by one of those Hatfields. Devil Ants, one of his sons, Something like that. No photo, the gun's real. It has a serial number. You know, if the gun was made past a certain time in life, it has a serial number. Serial number don't prove it. Belong to Devil Lance Hatfield unless you've got a some kind of a paper there where he bought that gun, that serial number's wrote on that paper and it's signed and dated. Or again, a photo with that gun standing there showing them that serial number in the Camera. Letter of authenticity. There's your four things. It says no one has ever challenged this. Well, I'm challenging it today. It takes more than a notarized signature to prove anything that Mr. William Keith Hatfield says. See, I don't have a, I'm not going to get mean. I'm not. I don't have a lot of faith in Mr. William Keith Hatfield. I don't. I'm not going to use bad language. I'm not going to insult his Christianity. I'm not going to. Good job. Belittle them, but I'm just going to say as a 40-year career police officer, I don't have no faith in what he says. We've uncovered things left and right. We've made videos left and right, proving what we've uncovered and what he has said, along with where he says that McCoys are vermin. Says the McCoys are vermin. Horse-stealing, kiss, pig-kissing vermin. Hmm. But I'm not going to say nothing mean. That's his words. I guarantee you I could top it if she wasn't standing behind that camera and people hadn't uh, tried to get me to be a little I'm bit nicer. I'm glad you're not. Good job. So I won't insult him like he did the McCoys or like Rio Hatfield did when he signed the peace treaty and he said he never did like McCoys on principle. But yet McCoys have never made up a story on the Hatfields like... Uh, Rio Hatfield made up on Hubert Bay McCoy and his family. Never happened. Uh, this is a um, total, I'm not going to say that word. Oh, gosh. <laughs> it's all spoken in the history. And uh, I've got a lot more there, but that's, that was on the last video, and I'm trying to reform. Hopefully I will. He says that... Uh, at the last thing that he does there, when you watch that video of a big sandy museum, and 
He talks about the police officers being in the background. Got a lot of cops here to protect that gun. Needs a lot of protection. Listen, I was a cop for 40 years. You tell me that there's donuts and free coffee, I'm gonna be there. That's a cop. <laughs> I don't know what they told him to get them there, just to invite them up to make a video with them. That's or promote the big Sandy Museum. You know, the cops didn't get to say, oh, we're here to protect that gun. I think if the cops run the gun and everything, they would, let's don't go there. Yeah. Let's don't go let's... there. Good job. Will Key says that nobody's ever challenged this gun. I'm challenging it. I'm challenging it that it never belonged to uh, Cap Hatfield, especially never belonged to Devil Lance Hatfield. Now, Wilm Keith, the last thing he does there, you'll see him and he'll, after he gets through talking and uh, talking about the normal culture, talking about all these different things of guns, comparing one gun to another gun. I don't care if you compare guns, a, a 38 to a bazooka. At the end of the day, did either one of them ever belong to Devil Lance Hatfield? That's the question. Don't let him confuse you when he's standing there talking about this, these guns and the difference in the guns and the rifling in the barrels and the, and the letters of authenticity. Our question is, what proof does he have that this gun ever belonged to Devil Lance or Cap Hatfield? There is none. He, he's speaking this into history. He's writing it in the history because the last thing he says there, he says, because of all the things that we've got here, what a gun with a serial number, with a letter of authenticity from who? We, we still haven't even seen. If it's not Cap Hatfield or Devil Ants or Tennis Hatfield, it, it's not worth it's not worth nothing. That's not a letter, a letter of authenticity. Look here what he's getting ready to do. He says, I have no problem signing this. And he takes and he signs this paper, another letter of authenticity to put with that gun with him, William Keith Hatfield, declaring that gun as Devil Lance and Cap Hatfield's gun. Now, some of you may not think that, that matters to anything, but let me tell you what happens in another 50 or 100 years. William Keith Hatfield's dead. Rio's dead, Sheila's dead, I'm dead, everybody's dead. New generations out here and they're in a museum and they're looking at this gun, this little Derringer, no pictures, no nothing of. And then they see this letter of authenticity signed by William Keith Hatfield. William Keith Hatfield, well, you know and I know that's supposedly the great grandson of Devil Ants. Did he know Devil Ants? No. Was he born then? No. No. Does he, did he, was he born in uh, Saran or Logan County, West Virginia? No. Was he raised in Logan County, West Virginia? Does he live in and reside in Oklahoma? And he comes in as a, a Hatfield because nobody back home, none of the Hatfields and McCoys back home that grew up and lived there and love each other. None of us want to take Sides are getting involved with none of that stuff. So they have to bring these Hatfields and McCoys in from Oklahoma, Waycross, Georgia, Raleigh, North Carolina, Waynesboro, Virginia. Hmm, does that not sound funny? That out of all the Hatfields and McCoys back home, nobody wants to get involved in any of that. But the ones that they bring in, they want to call people vermin. They want to say they don't like McCoy's, the Hatfields, West Virginia Hatfields. They don't like McCoy's because of principle. But yet the principle is calling us vermin and saying they don't like the McCoy's. And I'm half Hatfield and McCoy. I'm, I'm half, so don't get me wrong. I, if this was the other way around, I'd still say the same thing. I think mm -hmm. most of you know that by now. So when you go watch this video, I want you to uh, pay attention to the way that Mr. Hatfield talks and presents that gun. He tells you everything that that gun is but a milk cow, but he, he, he can't prove that it's Devil Ants and, and uh, Caps. There's no proof. He just talks and talks and talks, like as long as it's a gun, as long as it's this or that. I can't emphasize it enough. I don't know what else to tell you. Now, let's move on to the second part of this video. Okay. And the second part of this video consists of
that board that is in the back of him when he's standing there. And that board, I just happened to notice it while he was standing there. And, uh, you know, I, I noticed, I did hear him say <clears throat> that they had the bed to Asa Harmon McCoy there. As a police officer of 40 years, guys, uh, they got the bed of Asa Harmon McCoy. But just like Wall Hatfield and just like Cotton Top, Hatfield, they don't even know where Asa McCoy's buried at, but they got his bed. Now, if you all believe that, I'd have got some oceanfront property, I'd like to say, in Arizona. They say they got Asa Harmon McCoy's bed, but they don't even know where Asa Harmon McCoy's buried. They don't even know where anybody buried him at after they killed him. But they kept his bed. Well, anyway, let's move on. That board in the background, of course, it's in a Hatfield and McCoy Museum in Pikeville, Kentucky. Big Sandy Museum. That's in Pikeville. Devil Lance Hatfield, the murder, was from West Virginia. Now, we could have had some Hatfields in this Hatfield and McCoy Museum. We could have had Preacher Ants Hatfield. We could the cost the uh, magistrate, Justice of the Peace. We could have had Constable Floyd Hatfield from Blackberry. We could have had Sheriff, Pike County Sheriff, Basil Hatfield. We could have had Bad Elias, first one that got in a fight with Tolbert on election day that had some history with him. So many, Randall McCoy, uh, the, the, all the, Frank Phillips, Perry Klein, the Kleins. So many from Pike County that we could have had in the Hatfield McCoy Museum. Sure, you could have a picture of Devil Lance and Randall, that's the two leaders. But that's where Devil Lance's history in Pike County ends. Down at the river on Buskirk when he shot and killed them three McCoy boys. Tell the history of our Kentucky Hatfields. Tell the history of the good people of Pike County. Randall McCoy and his family that wanted justice. That didn't go running around with guns and shooting everybody or, or burning their cabins down. But you know they got... Devil Ants Hatfield, I'm Blackberry. They got Devil Ants Hatfield all over their museum. So I'm naturally reading this in the background. I'm not gonna read it all, but it just says, uh, Will Anderson Hatfield, best known as Devil Ants, and tells all that crap and stuff. Ants grew up sharpening his skills as an exceptional hunter and outdoorsman. That's what it says. Now, once again, going back to that sawed off shotgun that that gentleman has over at Sarah Ann that says it's Devil Ants's, Sawed off shotgun, a right, a right shotgun. I, I carried one for 40 years in a cruiser on the dashboard. 18 inch barrel. Boy, I'll go get me a deer with that. I can shoot from here to the other end of this museum with it and probably hit something. Uh, with a slug, it is. So, says here he's an exceptional hunter and outdoorsman, but he. That gentleman wants you to believe he's got a sawed-off shotgun. Now, I'm, I'm going by the board now that's in the back of Wilm Keith. Okay. Says he quickly joins the uh, Confederate States Army, along with many of his neighbors. After leaving the Confederate Army, he returns home to protect his family and property from the terrors of war unleashed by the area with no civil order. He returned home. Says, says he leaves after leaving the Confederate Army, like he, like he just left, like he was, he was discharged. Thank you for your service, Mr. Anderson Hatfield. Here's you this little small pistol as a, a reward, and you go home and protect your family. We'll make the rest of these men stay here and fight. Devil Ants Hatfield deserted. He left. He ran. But they right here, and this is in the Pikeville Museum, after leaving, the Confederate Army, he returns home to protect his family. Would Randall McCoy not like to have returned home and protected his family? Uriah McCoy, my great-great-grandfather who was shot after Devil Ants had deserted, would he not have liked to return home? Would these soldiers in Afghanistan, Iraq, Vietnam, would they not have liked to have returned home with their families instead of fighting in a war? But they didn't. 
They were honorable. They stayed and fought because they knew these other soldiers were counting on them. Devil Lance didn't, didn't care. All law and order in the region had been suspended during the war and anarchy ruled. Anarchy ruled. Anarchy ruled after Devil Lance deserted and went back to Pond Creek, went back to Blackberry, went back to Macar, even West Virginia, even Mate One, Mate Creek, even, he didn't care. Guys, this was like Jesse James and Frank James, Cole Younger. It was like uh, William Cantrell back in those days. Black Bart, after the Civil War, people people just, they, they turned, some of them turned into thieves. Some of them just made it the easiest way they could make it. Well, how easy is it just to take it from your neighbor? And you know, the other day in here, we was in the shoot range, and I was talking mm -hmm. about if it ever hits the fan, that I'm coming after those people that got all this food stashed in their basement, all these ammunition stashed in. I was trying to give you a, a hint. I'm trying to give these people out here that says, they go around telling their neighbors, they go around telling everybody, I've got enough food here for two years. I've got enough ammunition. I've got 200 guns. I've got, guys, don't do that. Cause that's right here, Devil Lance Hatfield, is the man that's coming after your stuff. It says here he was a fierce leader, even as a young man in his mid-twenties. Fierce leader. He was a fierce leader of some desperados, bushwhackers. He was their leader. He was the Jesse James of why He told everybody he was the Logan Wildcats. He was the leader of the Logan Wildcats, a bunch of desperados. The year following the years, the years following the war's end, Ants was indicted for the first time in Pike County for murder, probably as a result of his actions. What in the world is that about? Well, Sheila and I have never heard that. It says his first indictment in Pike County was a year after the war ended. What was he indicted for in Pike County? And then they say, but it had to have something to do with the war. Results of war actions. Well, guys, all's fair in love and war. You don't get indicted for killing somebody in a war. Now, I'll tell you who he did kill. He killed Asa Harmon McCoy. Asa Harmon McCoy had been discharged. He was no longer in the uh, Union Army. He had been discharged December the 24th, 1864. Returned home hiding in a cave to keep from the West Virginia Hatfields coming there and burning his cabin down. That was their M.O. They, they burnt people's houses down. And um, he went up and hid in a cave so his family wouldn't be in harm's way. And uh, they followed his slave, bringing him his breakfast, who was part of their family, and followed his tracks through the snow and shot and killed him. Now, they killed him on January the 7th, of 1865. Remember, the Civil War ended just a few months later in April. But Asa Harmon had been discharged and sent home. He's out of the army. He's no longer a soldier. So he killed a civilian. Killed an innocent man. Three McCoy brothers arrest. This is 1880. On that board, it says 1880, the three McCoy brothers arrested Ansa's oldest son, Johnson and start to deliver him to jail in Pikeville, Kentucky. Devil Ants and a gang of followers, followers, followers humiliates him, humiliates the McCoy deputies by taking Jauncey back at gunpoint. First of all, there was only two deputy McCoys. There was uh, Tolbert McCoy and Jim McCoy. Now, Jim McCoy was the deputy sheriff almost till he, up till he died. He was, for years and years in Pikeville, he was a Pike County deputy sheriff. Got along good with everybody. Loved everybody, except the West Virginia Hatfields that killed his kin, as he says in the newspaper. And Tolbert was a deputy sheriff, of course. So there was two deputy sheriffs. Now, let's get this straight and see if you guys can comprehend this, and I know you can, because these are two police officers, and they had warrants. First of all, that was 100 years. That was 1880. From 1880 to 1882, Tolbert was a deputy sheriff, and then all the way through was Jim McCoy. In uh, 1980, 
1989, my brother and I, Barry and myself, were Pike County Deputy Sheriffs. That's 100 years after Jim McCoy and Tolbert McCoy was. We were Pike County Deputy Sheriffs. But let's get this. They had warrants for John C. Hatfield. They arrest them, and they're taking them to jail. And uh, Devil Lance intersects them. Intercepts them. And he takes John C. back. Now, it says here that he humiliated the McCoys. Now, if you'll remember in the History Channel's movie, he humiliates them. He tells them, get down on your knees and beg. And if I ain't mistaken, they, they got down and begged except for Jim McCoy. And that sounds about like the history of Jim McCoy. But uh, is that true? Do we really even believe that? You know, who, who put this on that board over there? What, what Pike County tourism official wrote that? And how do they know? How do they know that Devil Ants humiliated? I have a feeling, this is my opinion, but I have a feeling that the same people that says that they didn't like McCoys on principle, the same Hatfields that don't like McCoys on principle, the same McCoys that, call, the same Hatfields, West Virginia Hatfields, that called McCoys vermin, horse thieves, even though they, they never stole a horse, there's no proof that they ever stole a horse from a Hatfield, vice versa. Pig kissing McCoys. Huh. And now they right here that the devil ants humiliated the McCoys. And Pike County Tourism writes that on the board and has it there for y'all to see when you go see this reputable museum. Okay. August of 82, boys fatally shot. August 86, Asa Harmon McCoy and his wife Martha Klein, son Jeff shot in the back by Tom Wallace and Ants Hatfield's son Cat. Ants writes a letter to Perry Klein. Where's Jim Vance at? Jim Vance was here. They left Jim <clears throat> Vance's name out. Tom Wallace, skunk hair Tom Wallace, and uh, Cap Hatfield and Jim Vance shot and killed Jeff McCoy when he swam across the Tug River to the other side. Now we've discussed it in other videos, but they say they got he got over there and he jumps up and History Channel says he jumps up and shoots him the bird, shoots him the bird, jumps down there with rifles on him, knowing what kind of marksman people from the mountains are with guns. That never happened, but you know, it's okay. It says here that Devil Ants wrote letters to Perry Klein. Here's your Charles Manson. Here's, remember Charles Manson killed all kinds of people, but he never killed nobody. Charles Manson sent Tex, whatever his name is, in there and killed all those pregnant women and all this and that. Mm-hmm. Went to the LeBlanquis or whatever their names was and told that Sharon Tate, not Sharon Tate, but the other girl, one of his followers, take this knife and go in there and kill them both. Charles Manson sits in the car while they go in there and kill them. Something more like Devil Ant sitting in his cabin at his house sick while he sends the, his children and his uncle to Randall McCoy's to burn their cabin down. Hmm. And you all wonder why I compare Devil Ant's Hatfield to Charles Manson. Wrote a letter to Perry Klein, telling Perry Klein that it wasn't his uh, boys, it wasn't uh, the Camp and uh, uh, Tom Wallace, that it was the, because of Mary McCoy Daniels, Jeff's sister. And once again, just the idea of writing a letter, just the idea of leaving notes on the wall, spray paint or blood or whatever they do, that's what you had, that's the comparison I make. The governor issues warrants for Ants and his gang in August of 87. November of 87, Ants and his gang promise to stay out of Kentucky if the governor drops the rewards. Kentucky law instead intensifies the pursuit. By the end of the year, several of the Hatfield gangs arrested by invading Kentucky posses. False, false, false. Nobody invaded West Virginia and brought those Hatfields back until after the 1888 cabin burning. Now, I'm going to tell you right here, it says, uh, well, you can see it on the board. If you're interested, mm -hmm. go watch that movie. And it tells you there, August, in August of 1887, the governor of Kentucky puts out rewards for 
uh, the West Virginia Hatfields in August. Let's try this right here. There's a close-up of the warrant that we've got on the other side over there that we Stephen Hatfield got from Devil Anson give it to um, Tennis. Tennis gave it to Handsome Jack Hatfield, Stephen's dad, and Stephen's dad gave it to Stephen. Stephen had this up for sale before he died, and it didn't sell. We didn't know about it. All right. But then Debbie, his wife, sold it to Willard and Kathy Scott. Uh, Kathy McCoy. McCoy, I'm sorry, that lives at Saran, right up on the hill above where Stephen lived. And we made three trips to Sarah Ann, Sheila and I negotiating, and we finally bought this from them to put in the museum. That paper over there and that board you're going to read on the back says that he signed that warrant in August. Mm -hmm. uh, the governor signed it in August. Here's the governor's warrant, and he signed it on the 10th day of September. Yep. 10th day of September, 1887. Now, I know you're probably thinking, what's the difference? 30 days, August and September, who cares? Well, let's talk about that for a second. Okay. They're saying that he signed it in August. See, that's way back, like they have plenty of time. Signed it in August, and then it says November of 87. What's November of 87 mean? November of 87 means that October, it took to get to Governor uh, Willis Wilson's office in West Virginia. Willis Wilson sent John B. Floyd along with that warrant, that governor's warrant. Remember, that's what the Supreme Court ruled on, that if you're going to take prisoners from one state to another, you had to do it through a governor's warrant. You had to do it officially. Well, Simon Buckner's trying to do it officially. He sent them a, a notice that he wants devil ants in that gang extradited back to Kentucky to stand trial. Governor Willis Wilson sends John B. Floyd, his representative, to see Devil Ants. And he tells Devil Ants, Ants, we got this warrant here signed from the governor of Kentucky wanting to bring you and your gang over there for trial. What are we going to do? I don't, I wasn't there, so I can't tell you what they said, what he told John B. Floyd. I don't know what he told John B. Floyd he was going to do, but I'll tell you what was done. That was November. That was November. December the 31st, 87, January the 1st, uh, 88, that night, mm -hmm. New Year's Eve, they loaded up 13 men supposed to went. They ended up taking nine because Devil Ants come out and said he's sick. He wasn't going. There was 13 of them originally going. But after Devil Ants said he was sick and he didn't go, they started riding over toward the McCoys. And four more of them got sick. They said, hey, if Devil Ants don't feel like going, I don't feel like going neither. I think I'm going to stay home. I'll set this one out. Because they offered Devil Ants to wait till the next day. Wait till, no, no, you guys go on. You guys go on. Kill them all. And that's what they went to do. Kill them all. Read the statements of Charles Gillespie. Read the statements of Cotton Top. Um, it, it's out there. That's what they were going to do. Now, the last thing I was wanting to, uh, and, and that's what they did, and, and that's, uh, but the last thing that I wanted to do, this, this chart that you're looking at there, it says, without permission from Anderson Hatfield, from Ants on January the 1st, 88, several of his sons and other gang members burned Randolph McCoy's house down, killing two more of his children and Blunger and his wife. Two more of his children? Two more of his children. Mm -hmm. What'd I say? Children. Uh, children? You put... Killed and children together. Children. Oh, children. No, oh, killed his children. Without permission from ants. Guys, what's that all about? Without permission. Why, why would we put that in there? Who knows? Who, who was there that wrote that and said without permission? Charles Gillespie and them all tell who was in charge and all of what happened. That's statements from back then. Who, who, who was there today that wrote that board for Pike County museum that says, but it was without Devil Ants' permission. Well, you know what? I, I assume I'm probably, I ain't going to say probably wrong because I'm probably right. But I did hear William Keith Hatfield in one of his little videos that they made at the Preacher Ants' cabin, my great-great-grandfather's cabin replica. And I hear William Keith sit there and he says, Devil Ants was a good man. He just tried to do 
what he had to do. And he's sitting there making excuses for Devil Lance Hatfield. And that sounds like somebody that's making excuses. He had to do what he had to do. Kill, strip three boys down naked, tie them to trees and assassinate them. Had to do, he had to do that. See, I don't believe he did. I believe he could have went them, let them went to the justice system. He could always come back and kill them. If they turned them loose, he didn't get justice or didn't feel it's fair, kill them. But you don't just go tie them to trees naked and kill them because you think you're you're bigger than the law. See, it didn't happen like that. But that's look at that statement right there. Look at the statements that the West Virginia Hatfields have always wrote about Devil Ants and try to cover for him to make him bigger than life. Devil Ants is a zero that they have made a hero out of. If you'll do your research, you'll find we're correct on that. The last statement, and that was it. That's the same paper. It says right there, without permission, without permission, his boys and other people went. And, and I think that's just about going to suspend the anarchy rule to leave the South. I had notes here, but I don't even think I'm going to have to probably... Um, I don't think I even have to go over them. If I miss something, I missed it, and we'll just go with it. Um, I'm, I'm not going. I'm not going to get upset. You're doing great. I'm not going to get upset. It is what it is. It's sad that people really. And like I said, I didn't get like this overnight. It's took years and years and years, mm -hmm. and mostly since Pike County tourism in 2000 and. A one uh, started recognizing Bo McCoy and Ron McCoy as representatives like they're coming in there and suing John Vance for the rest of us and they put in the newspapers and in their book that it's the first time that the Hatfields and McCoys were back in court Hatfields and McCoys wasn't back in court two McCoys from other states sued John Vance they didn't sue no Hatfield they sued John Vance John Vance was not a Hatfield but they knew they wouldn't get that recognition if they didn't say Hatfield and McCoys were back in court. And then Ron has to, then Ron says, he had to come in here and do something because he didn't feel like none of the local McCoys was gonna stand up. Boy, how special he must feel that he's that, that tough a guy. All the Hatfields and McCoys back home and he had to come in here and follow suit where there was no suit needed. Nobody ever had a problem visiting the cemetery until he filed the suit. He caused a problem that we didn't have. And then the other ones come in, they sign a peace treaty to get in the news, to have a publicity stunt. And they make these remarks about principles of McCoys. And then in 2011, they start these rumors on Hubert Bay McCoy, a World War II hero that lived through Omaha Beach that come back home a hero and got a job in the coal mines and was shot in the back of the head and killed by his grandfather and then he makes his grandfather out to be a, a hero and when he they sentenced him to five years hard labor in prison for shooting a man in the back of the head unarmed man and then the other one of course like I said I'm not going to attack his personal position but uh, to call people in his position, the position that he holds. And you can say, oh, well, he was joking. Oh, well, guys, I'll tell you, that's that's not a position that people in that position, you don't call people vermin, especially when you just got through feuding with them a hundred years ago, hard feelings, and your, your supposed grandfather. And again, we, we haven't seen no DNA on these West Virginia Hatfields. We ain't seen no DNA on Ron and Bo McCoy. We don't even know if they're actually related to Randall McCoy like they say they are. Guys, it's Fred and Sheila McCoy. Please go watch that video. Watch their video after you watch this one. Study it. And if I'm wrong, you've got my phone number. You've got my text number. You've got our website. You can get a hold of me if it's important enough, and I think I can help you. I'll call you back or text you back. Uh, again, we don't we don't do DNA. I'm sorry, guys. We get a lot of requests for DNA. Can you help me find my grandma? Who was my grandpa related to? Guys, go get a DNA. Go spend that fifty to sixty dollars. Spit in a cup. Send it to them. They'll tell you who you're related to. They'll tell you a whole lot better than I could. Sheila or I could. We're not mm -hmm. genealogists. 
Um, I'm starting not to mention it, but there was a gentleman called again yesterday. I evidently, guys, they're making another Hatfield McCoy movie. They're making another movie from different people with different actors. And if it's true, uh, the actor will is going to be nice, going to be good. I just hope they tell the true story. I hope they do it right. Now, I'm telling this to, to them because they watch our videos. That's what they were calling us about. And I'm telling it to anybody else. We are not interested. Sheila and I are not interested in getting involved in no movies, no documentaries, no, at one time maybe in life, to straighten things out. But we we figured out our own way to straighten it out. We're straightening it out through these videos. Or at least we're putting it out there. We'll put the other side out. So we're not interested in documentaries or movies. Anybody out there is welcome to use any movie, with, with any video we've made, any information, anything at all. We'll help you any way we can, but we don't want no part of, of no movies or documentaries or anything. Uh, use anything we've got. You have our permission. And uh, we just hope you tell the truth. We just hope you do a better movie than what the History Channel and Daryl Fetty did uh, with their end of it. You know, Daryl Fetty was one of the producers of that show from Huntington, West Virginia, and he's one of the ones in the Herald Dispatch over there. He says that Alan Hatfield, the guy that shot Hubert Bay McCoy, was 80 years old when he died, and he still knew him, and he still had the three bullets in his back. Never had three bullets in his back. Hubert Bay never shot him. Hubert Bay was unarmed. <clears throat> what you call it? Another Hatfield, Rio, says that he had a bullet taken out of his belly. Well, I mean, he did say that. I know, but he did say, if people says things, now babe, I've got to have an understanding with you. If people gets out here and represents Pike County tourism and different, and they say things, and they're on video saying this, I have a right to express my opinion or my thoughts on it. You, we can't act like they didn't say something because we don't want to be controversial. Rio Hatfield said that his grandfather was shot in the belly. He says it on that tape that we made of him when I'm talking to him on the phone. Had a bullet removed from his belly. But yet on Phoebe Judge and everywhere else, he says he was shot in the back. Yeah. Yeah. I've got, I have the right to prove people wrong if you're going to say something. Okay. Guys, it's Fred and, well, I ain't going to say that part. That's Sheila's part. Yeah. So she'll take it from here. Thank you all. Please like, subscribe, and share. And we'll catch you on the next one. Bye.